Hello children, in our previous video we learned about wool. The woolen cloth saves us from the cold of winter. The woolen cloths are very common around the world. But have you ever wondered what did the Maharajas or the kings used to wear? What were their royal clothes made of? It was silk. Silk is just a wonder material of cloth because clothes made of it is very light in weight. The silk clothes keep you warm in winter and also keep you cool in summer. Isn't it interesting? That means silk clothes are very comfortable and very beautiful too. And silk fiber is very strong and durable. That is why silk is very expensive and it was preferred by all the kings and the queens. You know, according to a legend, silk was discovered by an empress in China, Si Lung Chi. One day, the emperor of China asked Si Lung Chi to go in royal garden and find out what was damaging the leaves of mulberry tree in the garden? She found that small white worms were eating all mulberry leaves. She then noticed some fat worms were spinning shiny and beautiful cocoon around it. Suddenly a cocoon fell in cup of her tea and she noticed shiny thread coming out from cocoon. Later she found a way to reel those threads from cocoon for making yarns. This wonderful fiber was silk. So silk industry began in China. Now you must be clear, silk is actually a gift from an insect, silk moth. The most common silk moth is the mulberry silk moth. Now let us see. How an insect gives the most lustrous and the most valuable fiber of all, the silk. We get silk from larva of silk moth, which is a silk worm. The silk worms are born from eggs of silk moth, just like caterpillar is born from eggs of butterfly. Silk moths love to eat mulberry leaves and lay hundreds of eggs on those leaves. The eggs are kept in the strips of clothes to keep them warm and clean. Thus the eggs hatch faster. Once silk worms are hatched, the worms are kept in big trays on mulberry leaves. They are given only fresh leaves to eat they eat like hungry elephants for the next 25 to 30 days and grow very fat. They become many times larger compared to what they were at the time of hatching. When the worms are ready for the next stage of life, they stop eating. And you know what is the next stage of their life? It is pupa or cocoon. The silk worms make cocoon around itself just like caterpillar of butterfly. The silk fiber is obtained from these cocoons. Then thread from 4 to 8 cocoons are joined and twisted together to make stronger thread. And this thread is wound in a reel. This thread in reel is called raw silk. Nowadays, special machine is used for making the raw silk. Generally, two or more raw silk threads are twisted together to make strong silk yarn for making clothes. The silk yarn is weaved to get shimmering silk fabric that is used to make beautiful clothes. Rearing of silk worms to obtain yarn from cocoons. This means a lot of things need to be done to get beautiful and strong silk yarns. The long process that starts from hatching of egg to get yarn is called sericulture. 
but production of silk is carried out by farmers in rural areas in many parts of india like assam jharkhand etc sari culture has shown them a simple way to earn livelihood different silk moths yield yarn of different texture like different coarse smoothness shine etc like tassar silk muga silk kosa silk etc are obtained from cocoons spun by different types of silk moths this silk is used in india to make beautiful sarees like banarsi saree and many other traditional dresses like ghagra choli chudidar kurta sherwani etc which are worn on special occasions even most of the dresses of old sultans maharajas and their queens were made of silk so silk is a part of indian tradition that was all about silk today children bye bye